Uh, I grew up in New Mexico. I was adopted before I was born, actually. I uh, had one sister, went to college, and in college I started drinking a little bit, but still not very many problems with it. I could still put it down when I wanted to. The problem actually happened, I got married when I was 27, and when, I, when my son was born, when I had my first child, I went through what I now know was postpartum depression. I felt like I wanted to be superwoman. I felt embarrassed, actually. Yeah. Um, and instead of doing that, instead of reaching out for the help that I should have, I turned to alcohol, and eventually it started taking me down. So my son was five years old. I was 35 and I had started hiding alcohol. I had switched from uh, red wine to vodka, uh, straight vodka, and um, I was in bad shape. Well, the progression for me, I, I started um, with the wine and I started cooking with it and it just took a little bit of an edge off. And the more I drank, it seemed the more that I needed the more that I would need to, to take the edge off of the tears and the depression. And there again, it was, it was postpartum depression that had moved in. It became progressive. Um, actually, the statistics in women are that women uh, tend to go down quicker in later life with alcoholism than men do. Right. You, you feel uh, extremely sad for no reason. You have a beautiful child. I had this wonderful, healthy little boy, and I would lay him down to bed, and then I would just cry, and I would cry, and I thought, I've got to get out of this. I've got to get out of this. And I was so ashamed of myself. I didn't want to tell anyone that I was crying and had a brand new, beautiful baby boy. My husband confronted me. I went to my first treatment center and at the treatment center, I, I lied. I, I didn't want to tell the truth about anything from the postpartum depression to my early childhood, which, which I had a rough childhood as well. Was there abuse? There was abuse. Okay. And I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to uh, share those things, and so I didn't. And I came home and I stayed sober for 30 days and tried to figure out a way that I could drink like a normal person, um, still not feel feelings, which is what I was using the alcohol to not feel any. It was very rough. There were very rough times uh, in and out of treatment centers. There were a total of six, six treatment centers. I had two DUIs, one in a church parking lot. Wow. And, um, I also was uh, put into jail at a treatment facility. I walked across the street at a Super Rama grocery store and stole beer. And then one of the enthusiastic clerks decided to chase me. <laughs> so I'm running with this beer and throwing it over my shoulder because I thought if they didn't catch me with the beer, then somehow I wouldn't get caught. Um, then there was a point where I, they thought I was crazy and I kind of thought maybe I was crazy too. Sure. So I was put into a psychiatric ward where they took my shoelaces and um, I sat around uh, trying to talk to myself and figure out what was wrong with me for about a month. And um, shortly after that, I was in a homeless shelter for three months. I, I didn't reach the bottom at the homeless shelter. That uh, that would be a, a, in a jail cell um, about a year later after the homeless shelter. Mm. And so what, what led to your recovery? I believe for me, uh, I was in the jail cell and I was there with other women and I just, I just hated it. Uh, just the idea of being <laughs> locked up and uh, my church family, I was calling them and asking them to bail me out, and they said they love me, they're praying for me, but they were not going to bail me Amen. out. 
Tough uh, love, right? Tough love. Yes. Yeah. My family stopped uh, taking my Enabling phone calls. Enabling you and, yeah, and trying to help you. And, and so there I was left with just me and the Lord. You and I, uh, I told the Lord and I, I actually had some sheets out ready and I was planning on tying the sheets together and trying to kill myself. And then I realized I couldn't even do that because I was afraid it would be hurtful huh. and I didn't want to die that kind of death. <laughs> And then somewhere as a kid in church, I had heard that if you commit suicide, then you go to hell. hell. So I was scared. And I said, God, I can't do this anymore. I, I just can't. I'm broken. I'm done. And I, I just need, I'll, I'll try one more time. If you'll help me, Lord, I'll try one more time. And then if not, I will kill myself. I was offered to go to what they call a halfway house, which I immediately said yes to. I knew after crying out to God in jail and then being called back and offered this opportunity, I knew that God had opened this door for me. Right. And I went to this halfway house, spent another three months at the halfway house. I actually was kicked out of wow. the halfway house. For but, drinking? But not for drinking. <laughs> Thank the Lord, not for drinking. Um, just some things that I really didn't understand at the time. Later, I would understand. Uh, my husband let me come home, and I drank my last drink a, a week later, but things had changed for me. I truly was trying. And that was in 2006. I uh, started working in a 12-step recovery program and just really taking one day at a time. And